and welcome back fire alarm technicians today we're going to be doing a firmware update on a existing panel out in the field the panel is a 922 this is going to be for 922 or 924 firmware update again this is for a panel out in the field it already has a program running on it but you need a firmware update it. this will not be for voice panels just for the basic fire alarm panel what I like to start off by doing is connecting to the panel and downloading the most current version that's on there onto your computer just for safe measure. So as you see, I already have the program open in front of me. I'm already connected to the panel, so let's proceed. We go to File, New Site, and Transfer from Panel. Now, I've included a little error message here and showing you how to get around it. So I'm be connecting and I just sit here and wait. Typically, something would happen by now, but nothing is happening. Why is that? Well, we're going to go ahead and show you where we're going to go to. We're going to down here at the network. In this case, it's the Wi-Fi. We're going to right-click, open up Network and Internet Settings. You can then click on Ethernet, change adapter, adapter options. And we're going to change it for the Ethernet, not the Wi-Fi. Right-click properties and right here I have the internet protocol version 4 I'm going to click that to highlight it and click on properties again and you see we're currently using this IP address that's what's stopping us from communicating we want to select on obtain an IP address automatically hit OK and close upon doing this it's going to reconnect to the panel and if you do it quick enough, you might even start working here. But it looks like it's just going to be hung up. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cancel. It says it's going to be connected. Now with my IP address change, we're going to go back in again. New site. Transfer from panel. Next. OK for local connection. Now that I have an IP address automatically, it is talking to the panel, and you see the progress bar. If you have multiple panels, it will do multiple transfers. You get information about the panel. If that looks good, just hit OK. And I already have one called a shot panel on my thing, so we're just going to say yes to this. And it is saving it. So the next step is actually sending the firmware update to the panel. So for this step, first we're going to initiate the panel update at the panel. We're going to go to the panel itself, open up the door, and we're going to press and hold both the Acknowledge and the red S32 button that is right on the inside of the PMI. Press and hold both at the same time for about five seconds. After about five seconds, you should hear a little beep at the panel. Then the panel is going to start a reboot process. Depending on what current version of the firmware is on the panel, it may have a couple different screens that can show up as. Regardless, either way, it's going to boot up in a firmware mode. So now it's looking, in just a moment, it's going to be looking for us to send the firmware update. So we're going to go to Update. And here we have a couple choices. And we're always going to pick Update Main CPU. The password will be 12345678. On earlier versions of password, earlier versions of the programming, the password was just 1234. Newer, newer versions, it's 1 through 8. Hit OK. And we're going to initiate update at panel, because that's what we did. It says, hey, if you do this, it's going to wipe out the configuration, all the event memory. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. And it's telling you what I basically told you to do earlier. You're going to press the S32 and the Acknowledge button for about five seconds. We've already done this, so hit OK. Now it's already started. And you've got this progress bar right here. It's not doing anything, and it never will do anything. But if you look at the bottom right, down here it says Firmware Update for Host. It has a transferring. It has a percentage. I do not recommend running on background. Just go ahead and keep it up top. Now you can skip ahead if you want to 
just go ahead and get to the end of the firmware update to get to the next step. But while we're waiting, I'm going to tell you why we're not doing the update main and additional CPU. If you clicked that update earlier, you saw there were several options. There was update main CPU, update additional CPUs, and then a the third option, update main and additional CPUs. Now what is most efficient is if you update the main and additional CPUs. It will connect your computer to the panel and update everything all at once. The reason why I do not recommend doing this is while your computer is hooked up to the panel doing a firmware update, it is actively erasing everything on the chip, then dumping a new set of firmware on the chip. And for any reason, at that time, the connection is broken, the chip is ruined. There's no way to restart the firmware update on that chip. You'll have to send back the hardware back to Siemens. So we went as little time as possible connected to the, um, the chip for a firmware update. So we do update main CPU only. And once that's done, the main CPU on the firm, on the panel itself can update everything else. You don't need a computer for it. So once again, update main CPU only. Unless you want to take your chances. I've had to send hardware back to the Siemens. Now, if you notice down here, we got a window saying the firmware transfer has finished. It is it now safe to disconnect from that host? <laughs> no, it is not. I see we're only 60% done. It is not safe to disconnect. Ignore this first pop-up. Until you see that 60% turn to 100% and there's no longer any progress bar, do not disconnect. Again, if you want to skip ahead, there will be no more talking until this is complete.
Okay, so that last percent seemed to take forever. We seem to be stuck in 60 and then 70 for a long time. But now we got two farmers of, of a populated here. The progress bar has stopped. Now this is kind of a flaw of Siemens. You see, it still looks like it's running here. You can stop it. Is it done? You know, if this is your first time, you may feel a little apprehension. Especially when you click stop and it says, hey, uh, do you really want to stop? I mean, running and stopping might fail the update. Yeah, if there's no progress bar, then yes, you want to stop. And you can close these out, they make no difference. But now your panel should be automatically rebooting. Now at some point, it's going to ask you about installing a BVD. A BVD is a version of a license. You may have one or multiple, depending on which company you're with. Install the proper one. But there's some work we have to do on here. If we went from, say, version 8 to version 9, you could just stick this program back on the panel because it will not work. You'll get an error message saying incompatible BVD. If you ever get a message saying incompatible BVD, which we would likely have here, is we would have to go to edit. And there's a little thing here called convert site. And which site do you want to convert? And it gives you a list of licenses. On mine, I only have one license type, one BVD. So convert. Hey, you can't uh, revert this. You sure you want to do this? I don't know why they say this, because they automatically make a backup save. See, you can revert. But regardless, yes, we want to continue. Should get a little progress bar. Converts all your panels. And now you're converted. And it saved it as what you had before. There's another say that's going to be similar with some uh, a bigger extension at the end. But now we are ready. Fortunately, our panel is not. So we have to wait for the panel to finish its install. I said you have to click. Uh, it's probably going to restart several times. There's a one chance. Uh, one time you're going to be installing the BVD. Then it'll restart a couple more times. Just be patient and wait for your panel to start beeping at you, essentially. On mine, it says it's starting the application, so I should be good to go in roughly 30 seconds to a minute. And then I'll show you the next step. Okay, at this point my panel is finally fully restored, or restarted, not restored. And now we want to dump our panel programming onto the panel. So what you have to do is if you have one panel or multiple panels, regardless, you have to click on the panel that we're working with. In this case, I only have one panel, so we want to click on it. And then we're going to go to Commission, and we're going to Initialize Panel. I should get a message saying set my panel to level 3. That is as soon as it establishes a good connection.
Now what I recommend is if you have this problem where it doesn't seem to want to connect, you might want to attempt to disconnect your network cable either from your computer or the back from the PMI. You want to disconnect and then reconnect. Then I would cancel out of this and attempt to do it again. Initialize panel. By refreshing the connection, it all of a sudden was able to communicate. Now, before I start this, I'm going to show you if I didn't click on the panel, we will get error message. Commission, initialize panel. It says you have not selected a panel on the tree. Please select the panel, and then try again. So that's because I clicked on the site instead of the panel. Now, you do not have to be on hardware. You could be on detection or control. Regardless, you have to click on the right panel. So I'm going to do this in control. Commission, initialize panel. It's going to talk to it and says, okay, let's start. And it's warning me, set your panel to level three. Now, if this is an old firmware, the password used to be 0000 by default. And if it's a newer firmware, you're going to have eight zeros instead. Let's go to your panel and log in. Press the menu button and it should flag you for a password. Now that I'm logged in, I will come back and it's changed already. Action cannot be averted. Do you want to continue? Yes. Now after initializing, your panel will reboot again. After rebooting, you might want to look on the screen after it's done loading, and you may have some error messages saying incompatible firmware. From the PMI at this point, you can hit the execute commands, You'll have to put in your password again, all zeros, and you have the option to update firmware. Now you may have one, you may have 10 incompatible firmwares. It will update all of them from the panel. You do not have to do it from the computer anymore. And at this point, your panel programming has already been sent. So if you had a healthy panel beforehand, your panel should be healthy after a firmware update a second time. And with that, we are done with the firmware update.